Hello and welcome to my last video of 2022, kindly sponsored by Skillshare. I hope everyone had lovely holidays with lots of relaxing and delicious food spent with friends and family. I certainly did, even though I had to do a lot of work in between, but still nice to take some time off and I really hope I'll be able to take a little bit more time off next week, I hope. But anyways, uh, I absolutely love New Year, so Happy New Year everyone. I'm posting this at a time where hopefully it will be New Year shortly so that um, it, this will make sense. And even though the illustration that I'm showing you here is, I suppose, more Christmas themed, actually, I where I grew up in Russia, um, we kind of celebrated New Year's a lot more than we did Christmas. Christmas was is still more of a religious thing and I think it's celebrated in January from what I can remember. Anyways, the whole tree decoration thing and the presents and whatnot was actually more of a New Year thing so I guess it still makes sense um, according to how I remember my childhood but anyways, yeah I'll tell you guys more about the idea of this drawing a little bit later as you can see it's my characters and yeah I just wanted to chat for a little bit with you about just closing 2022 and what I'm trying or planning to do for 2023 and just you know kind of looking back and assessing my general progress and whatnot. So yeah, as some of you may or may not know, I'm actually a big journaling enthusiast and I typically keep a bullet journal uh, relatively custom, although in 2022, I decided that sometimes, um, I, I decided that generally I think uh, bullet journaling in a completely custom way uh, takes up a lot of time and I wanted to try it using a very plain agenda, but that's like already um, charted out in, for weekly um, and monthly spreads which is what I did I'm trying to remember what brand I used but I guess it doesn't matter um just like a Korean agenda is one I used and the whole year fit into one journal and I did use it quite a bit and it worked well but I found myself missing doing everything manually and just like setting up the journal because I think in the end it ends up being so hectic without having any downtime if you just focus on work so i think i'm gonna go back to doing like a manual bullet journal this year even though i'm already kind of late for setting it up i should have set it up by now because um january is coming so soon but i'm half um planning to just do it next week and hopefully eh, it's still like good enough for me i guess can't do everything ahead of time as it turns out but yeah so looking back on what I did in 2022, you know, at the end of the year, I always kind of assess the situation and I'm always a bit sad that I didn't manage to launch my uh, comic, which is obviously a re repeated occurrence that's happened for the past like few years. But I did make a lot of progress this year, a lot, way more than any previous year. And, you know, I'm trying not to get myself too down about the fact that I didn't manage to actually start my comic this year because I did come pretty close. And this was, um, in retrospect, a very, very busy year for me. I actually did so many things and took many trips and got married. I had my wedding and I had like... A wedding of a very close friend of mine and lots of other weddings to attend i saw so many shows and i love music so it was amazing to finally be able to see shows again after all the lockdowns and whatnot so it was a super busy year and i did do a bit of freelance not too much and i kind of came to the conclusion that you know actually before making this um voiceover i watched my last year's end of year i guess i posted at the beginning of january um video and i did talk about how i wanted to stop doing freelance completely and obviously i failed to do that because i did end up doing a bunch of freelance this year but it wasn't too much and i now i'm coming to the conclusion that i shouldn't try to banish it from my life completely because clearly it's something that i keep voluntarily choosing to do and there are a couple of recurrent clients that I just love working with. And I think the timing is fine at this point. It doesn't take up like 
the entire year for me and if i just do it more in a more streamlined way it's something that i can definitely keep working on and still pursue my other projects as well because i feel like anytime that i've tried to cut off freelance completely from my life i just kind of get super derailed and yeah freelance is good for organization and i'll touch on that in a little bit but first let me just tell you real quick about this video sponsor skillshare skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes on a huge variety of creative topics it's a really fun platform you can browse to find ideas for a new hobby and the classes are divided into short segments that make it super easy to follow i especially like to browse for new classes around holiday time just to relax and learn something interesting you really never know what you'll stumble across when browsing skillshare from creative cooking to journaling all the way to like business advice or video editing tricks, there's a ton of classes. A very prolific teacher on Skillshare whose classes I like to check out is Gabrielle Bricky. She's got a ton of super useful classes on drawing and I especially love the one called Learn to Draw Daily Practices to Improve Your Drawing Skills. If you're a beginner or even if you feel like you need a quick refresher on the fundamentals, I'd highly recommend checking out this class because she does such a great job breaking down the most important aspects of learning how to draw. This is the type of stuff that's often overlooked by beginners but can make a tremendous difference in your art. And the best part is that you can watch this class absolutely for free. The first thousand people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So I highly recommend Skillshare share it's an awesome community so check out the link in my description and now back to the video so like i mentioned i don't want to banish freelance completely from my life and that's like a pretty good decision for me because i really struggle a lot with you know trying to resist doing freelance and you know it's just like too many emotions so i think it's good to just have a balance between the two uh, because uh, at the end of the day, earning a living, like in terms of the time I need to invest into working on things, it ends up being the same anyways. So it really doesn't matter too much what I end up doing. At least part of the year has to be spent specifically on things that are designed to earn an income. And unfortunately, my comic is just not one of those things. So I can't completely focus on it, but I will um, still put a lot more effort into doing that next year i mean i want to be fair to myself too because as much as i wanted to um focus on my work stuff i still managed to like i managed to do a lot of different things last year that had nothing to do with work or i guess this year um that had nothing to do with work and like my wedding was a huge part of it i didn't really know how that was gonna go obviously because i've never had a wedding to plan before and it was like i'll be honest with you guys i've never been one of those people that are like oh my wedding oh my god like i'm obsessed and i want to be a bride it was actually like the opposite of that and you know the idea of just being in the center of attention and like I don't know it just seemed kind of horrifying to me throughout my whole life so at, at best like i just never really thought about it like it's not like i never wanted to get married or didn't want to have a wedding it's just that the um prospect of having to plan it <laughs> just really like did not sit well with me so obviously once i arrived at the situation where i actually did have to plan it um it was daunting and i Obviously, like if I had to do it again, I would have done it a little bit differently because there's a lot of things I didn't know how to go about. Like, uh, I, I don't know. It was like this whole learning experience for me. And I think I learned a lot about just generally like trying to plan stuff and how to approach getting a billion tasks done and without getting like overwhelmed by them, which sometimes I obviously did. But in the end, it came together like perfectly and exactly how i wanted it to and there's nothing i would change and then like it all just ended up working out i don't know i think it was very lucky because a lot of the times things do go wrong at weddings um at least from what i've heard from a ton of other people i know who had to plan weddings and just like something always goes wrong but i think we were really lucky that actually everything just went exactly according to plan and yeah it was uh not too much like it wasn't a ridiculously huge amount of things to plan but still 
you know there was a fair amount and i think in terms of project planning and organizing that was a really really helpful experience for me because at the end of the day i realized there's like a ton of overlap between planning an event and you know that entails like having to look into things order things communicate with multiple people it's very similar to running a business um in a lot of ways so you know it was it was good for me to learn a bunch of lessons about like not procrastinating on simple tasks and getting things done quickly and microtasking and like all that other stuff so anyways i digress Oh, I guess another thing I wanted to mention is that, yeah, as much as I said, I I didn't really, like, I wasn't too keen on planning a wedding and was a little bit horrified about, like, being the center of attention, which all ended up being wonderful. It wasn't, like, I don't know, it was a great time to spend with all the close people in my life. Uh, but I also actually felt a lot of dread towards, like, anything surrounding a wedding, like, any of those other events like a bachelorette party or like a bridal shower those also seemed like daunting as hell to me and i was just like man i don't even know what to do about this stuff i don't know who's supposed to plan it like how how much involvement i should have in it and it just felt so awkward to me but honestly at the end of the day having my closest wonderful friends as my bridesmaids and having to spend a couple of times like dedicated to hanging out with them and I have a lot of friends that don't uh, that aren't super close with each other so i have a lot of friends that are just kind of like separated they do know of each other because we've known each other for such a long time but it's not like we're a group or anything and having them all as a group in one place was just amazing like there's something i never even thought about before but yeah it was it was really great for everyone to just kind of mingle for the first time in like 15 years because a lot of my friends i've had for a really long time and some of them are artists and actually one of them is chris hong art um she was one of my wonderful bridesmaids but yeah maybe at some point i'll actually make a video about this later to like commemorate or something but moving on from all the wedding stuff the other stuff that i managed to accomplish in 2022 was actually a ton something i didn't even realize up until i flipped through my journal obviously a huge huge accomplishment for me is the art book like it's the best art book i could have possibly hoped for and i can't wait for it um to actually get the physical copy of it i believe it's currently being printed as we speak um and i'm hoping to get a physical copy hopefully in like february or something so pretty soon but yeah that was huge and i spent so much time working on the content for the art book and it was just a lot and it was a hundred percent worth it so that was a huge project and i did like i mentioned quite a bit of freelance not too much but just a couple of projects of medium size and i'm really happy with the work that i produced for those and at some point in the future i'll be able to share it which is also great um unlike a lot of other freelance i did in previous years which i was never able to share with anybody but yeah uh, so Anyways, all in all, just looking back at 2022, it was great. And circling back to Gloaming Vale, I did make so much progress and very happy about that. And I think I put in a lot of effort into YouTube as well. I'm really happy with how I was able to be more consistent, I think, this year. And I'm hoping for even more consistency for next year. And you guys probably know, have noticed that I make different types of content and I think as a result I kind of have different clumps of audiences within the people that watch my channel. Um, which is something I also actually really like. I don't want to make the same type of content all the time. I really love going back and forth between different things and trying out like different types of video series and whatnot and it's all great. I, I like experimenting with new stuff so hopefully i'll be doing a lot more of that in 2023 i actually have a couple of ideas of new series i want to start but i'm not going to talk too much about that uh still gonna figure out planning like one of my biggest hurdles that i have to solve in 2023 is how to have youtube take up less of my time so that i can dedicate more of it to the comic because it is really difficult to post one video per week and do much of anything else at the same time um if any of you guys have a youtube channel i'm sure you would know what i'm talking about obviously like video production times uh 
vary greatly between uh, from person to person and i think i am a little like sort of on the faster side of things because obviously i don't put too much time into editing like i obviously i edit my videos and stuff but i don't have that much overlays or like any of the extra things or like subtitles or anything like that so my editing is very very straightforward and simple and so it's not too time consuming but still uh it ends up taking too much of my week um to the point where i find it really difficult to get other things done as well so that's something i'm gonna have to fix in 2023 and i'm thinking possibly i might have to either cut down the amount of videos that i put out or i have to pick like one day or like one week where i just do a live stream instead of making a video because i think that's something that takes a lot less preparation obviously i don't have to edit anything it sounds like a lot of fun too i think it would be nice to live stream so yeah that's something i'm considering for next year and yeah another thing Another big takeaway for me from looking over 2022 is that naturally I really tend to dislike the feeling like or just the idea of being super busy and like the rush that comes um, the rush that happens right between like any sort of big things that I'm preparing for but I think that's an attitude that I really want to change in 2023 and I think I need to embrace the hectic rush and I think maybe if I embrace it it will become less hectic and stressful because I always like kind of dread it and I'm like oh my god like something big is coming up and I have to do so many things and like I don't know I don't want to deal with it like you know what I mean but in the end it's just procrastination because so specifically what really kind of stressed me the hell out this year was preparing for a convention and i only had three conventions one of which i ended up completely having to bail on because i was so stressed out that i just couldn't do it like i was supposed to go to new york comic-con and i just bailed and i lost money but i bailed because i just couldn't deal with it and this was a huge failure in planning because um the one so I, I, like I mentioned, I had three conventions, one of which I bailed on, which was New York Comic Con. Um, the first one was Anime North, lo local convention, which is the first convention that I ever went to when I was, like, in high school. And, you know, I just tried to go to that con, like, as much as I can every year if the opportunity comes up. But this year, I have definitively made the decision that i'm never gonna go to that convention again i'm just done with it like i noticed that every year i go um it's just not really worth it i don't do super well at that convention i don't know if it's just this convention specifically or just anime conventions in general but i feel like i've been doing i've been having way more success in other convention like comic related ones so I think from now on, I'm just going to aim more at those and just going to forget about anime cons. Just forget about it. <laughs> I, and I have to scream this at myself because every time I get this massive FOMO because I know a lot of people who do those conventions and they seem to do super well and they have a great time, but it doesn't work for me. So never going to go to anime conventions again, especially anime North, which really stressed me out. It was like, oh my God, I don't even want to talk about it. Anyways. So I think because of the residual stress from Anime North, it, that's why I was so dreading the New York Comic Con. And it's a big shame because I really, really wish I went to that one because I love it. And I've been to New York Comic Con once before. It was such a great time and it was so lovely to meet people in New York because I know that a big percentage of my audience is New York in New York. So, yeah, um, but on a positive note, I did managed to pull through and go to lightbox expo and that was the best time and i really want to go to lightbox expo again next year if i can and as it turned out like all the things that i was dreading it really wasn't even that difficult to prepare for in the end like it was stressful at the time because i was doing things last minute because i just kept putting it off because it was really dreadful but um yeah, it ended up really working out and it, it wasn't as unpredictable or like, you know, gambly as I thought it would be because obviously some of you know I live in Toronto, um, Canada. So going to a convention that's so far away is a little bit daunting because I have to figure out how to transport all the stuff I need. 
but I figured out a very um, good setup that doesn't require too much stuff that I have to bring and you know it all just worked out anyways but long story short uh, I do really want to do just a couple of con conventions next year and actually happy news I did manage to get into TCAF the local um, comic like small press comic convention <laughs> I don't even know how to describe wait what does TCAF even stand for Toronto comic something anyways whatever festival yes so i'm going to uh tcaf which is great so that's something that is going to help me schedule a lot because i swear i really really want to have something in print relating to gloaming veil vale that actually has comic content for this convention and that hopefully will propel me to get my shit together and actually have something done by the time TCAF rolls around and it's pretty good because it's a, it is I think in like the first quarter of the year maybe the beginning of the second quarter I don't know so that gives me enough time but it's a reasonable amount of time and it's not too far off so that's pretty exciting I'm gonna use that as a deadline for myself and that obviously like um kind of relates back to what I was talking about earlier but just embracing um, having a lot to do and embracing the rush of having to do things um, in time like deadlines and such I mean I know this may sound super obvious to other people but it is kind of hard to set deadlines when you're free like when you just do things um, independently I guess I've had a lot of issues with trying to set deadlines for myself being totally independent so this is gonna help a lot and yeah that is one of my main goals for 2023. I'm also um, really hoping to attend New York Comic Con 2023 because obviously I failed to do it last year, um, this year, whatever. Um, yeah, it would be really nice to go again if I get the chance to. And this time I'm not going to dread the preparation. And so those are the three big kind of like convention things that I'm going to be looking forward to. And I will try to base my um, output in terms of gloaming veil around those because i want to start the comic next year that's my number one goal and i don't want to have a million usually i have like so many different things i want to do but i think if i learned anything from the past couple of years it's that i really need to stop trying to do a million things all at once all the time that's my biggest problem and even though I do manage to get a lot done I think I could seriously use with laser focusing on one project like I'm not even gonna say two even two is too much because I still know that things are gonna come up and I'm gonna have to um, juggle to some degree as I always do between projects but if I just try to focus on one hopefully I will get better results so yeah and uh, i guess i didn't really talk much about the drawing that i'm doing here so i self-titled it uh broke christmas and <laughs> the reason for that is because i don't know i was just thinking about like what i want to do for a holiday themed drawing and then i remembered that i had some years back in the day when i was really broke and i couldn't afford a christmas tree and instead i got this tiny little one that you see here and that's kind of what inspired this piece. There's nothing really going on there other than that. And it features my two characters from Gloaming Vale, Noel and Theo, Fiona. And yeah, hopefully this is a really good thing to end the year on so I can start it strong focusing on Gloaming Vale. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. And I will see you guys in my next video. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye.